It's 6.30 in the morning. Today's the day. The tank is here. And we're not picking it up in one of those little guys, no. We're getting it in the big boy. Let's go. So of course we got problems and I'm sitting here with an empty truck. Let's see if we're gonna figure this thing out. See how big this truck is? See how tall that opening is? You all lied to me. This is not the accurate height. They give you the internal dimensions of the inside of the truck, but they conveniently leave out that lip right there. And that lip is causing me not to have enough space to get the whole package inside the truck. So I'm scrambling right now. I gotta go return this truck, go get another truck that hopefully doesn't have a lip and then get back here before these guys go home for the day. Cause then I'm out a whole day. Let's go. Let's try this again, Penske. So Penske has a 26 footer as well, just like the U-Haul truck but their opening is a little bit bigger. It's exactly the 91 inches as the package. I'm gonna wing it and say, whatever. I'm taking the truck. We're gonna go see if that thing fits because we gotta get this baby home. We have to get the Penske big boy docking level, about 91 inches clearance from the top and that's the size of the package. So we'll see. This thing still didn't fit guys, but I knew there was a lot of cushion up on top of the tank. So I decided to open up right on the spot. Something the warehouse didn't want me to do, but Custom Aquariums recommends that you do open up your package and inspect it before taking delivery. So it had to be done. You got it. You got it. Like a glove, baby, like a glove. All the way or you have to get around the desk? Uh, right there, man. Right there, should be fine. As long as the door closes. Snug. I love it. This dude right here saved the day. When everyone there was telling me that I could not open the package, he went and got a drill. When everyone told me I couldn't get up on top of the package, he lifted me up on the forklift. I wish I knew your name, bro, but thank you very much. First crisis of the day, crisis averted, thankfully. Somehow, some way, we figured out how to get this thing into the truck. We took the panels off, even though we weren't supposed to. We got it down to size where it fit in the truck. We're in the truck and now we're on the way home. And then there's a whole nother hurdle when we get home because how are we gonna get this thing unloaded from the truck? I don't know. We're gonna figure it out when we get there. She made it home. That's her. 450 in the building not really in the building but here next big hurdle is getting the 210 out of the way i've already got it drained to as low as i possibly can for right now waiting for the fellas to show up so we can try to just slide this thing out of the way but if we can't do that if it's still too heavy i'm gonna have to take the fish out and drain it all the way i've got already got a bunch of extra oxygen in the tank i got a couple extra air stones going because these guys are gonna stay at this low level of water without filtration, without agitation for a while. So the air stones is gonna make sure there's plenty of oxygen in there while they hang out and wait. So I realized that the tank is still very heavy, but that's because there's still water, fish, substrate in the tank. But I also have a considerable amount of product underneath the tank, which I decided to take out along with my FX6 filters. Hopefully that makes the stand, I mean not hopefully, it absolutely will make the stand a lot lighter, but hopefully now, the whole tank can be moved together without having to separate them or take the water out or take the fish. I'm trying to avoid that step. Yeah, let's swing. Look, we're going to swing. So, Alon, you're doing the most turn. We're going to okay. swing. Okay. Ready? One, two, go. Oh, yeah. I forgot to unplug it. Yeah. Unplug from the wall. Okay. You just did it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Move slow, guys. No, 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 no rush. Ready? One, two, three, up. You need six real dudes to move a tank, baby. Let's go. All right, now for the hard part. Wow. You're not <laughs> the fun part is going to be unloading this massive tank, not only because it's huge and heavy, but also because we have a truck at docking level height. A forklift right now would be real nice. Luckily, it does have a lift gate, and we absolutely will be using it. What you see here is called strategizing on the fly, trying to figure out how to get this thing down. Custom Aquariums does a great job of packaging this thing, making sure it's safe for its travels to wherever you're located. So we finish up removing all the panels, all the plywood, all the two by fours, and get the stand 
and separated from the tank. By the way, full disclosure, six guys moving a heavy tank, you might hear some language. Don't say I didn't warn you. Bring it all the way back, bro. Should just bring it out. Bring no. it out. Come on. No, 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 no. Yeah. Put it down. We gotta move. We gotta move the tank out of the way. We gotta move it back. Watch your fingers. Right. Come over here. Good. Yeah, you know why? Because two, three. No. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. We're ready. We're ready. All right, go. Watch your step, guys. I love you. Watch your step. Somebody kick the plywood down. Forward. All right, the plug was out. All right, guys. All right. Watch, Watch your step, Carlos. I'm Carlos. Gonna get, I'm gonna get out of here. Yo, set it down right there, bro. Wait, wait, wait. Hold it, hold it. Try to go out a little more. Hello, in that. Watch your step. We got it. All right, we got to pull the plywood out. Nah, just go down. Oh, the plywood is the way? Just keep sliding it out. Hold it, hold it. Alright. You got that in? Yeah. All the way to the edge. I'm going to start going. Let us know when. I'm going to drop down the, the, the gate a little bit. Ready? Okay, One, two, three. Alright. Lopez, spin that way. 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 Yo, everybody, there's a bricks here, so watch your step. Get in the grass. Get in the grass. No question. You got a brick. Watch the brick on your feet, guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Don't get gas, though. The tank is like double this weight. Just watch your feet, guys. Should have took the tank first. <laughs> nah, because the tank has to go on top of this one. You sneeze in here, both of us? Yeah. Well, yeah. no. Watch your arm. You want to only. You got here. You got clearance here. You got. Okay. Oh, I can't get in there. Welcome to crisis number two. While I know that the tank itself can fit through the door, the stand is actually taller than the tank. So the stand itself didn't fit through the door. What do we have to do? We had to rip the entire door frame out of the frame. Now, let me tell you. I'm no carpenter by far, but without these guys, I would have never been able to do this. So my boys, I love them. Your tank from Custom Aquariums comes with this very important piece of cushion that goes underneath your tank above the stand. If you do not install it, you will void your lifetime warranty. Alright, alright, let's go. Look at the big joints. There you go, there's a garbage can right here. You're making a mess, bro. Alright, let's go. These suction cups are the truth. Show them a demonstration. See how see how easy it is to lift that up. Go ahead now. Look at that. And they go nowhere. Try one more time. Look at that. I have full faith and confidence in these suction cups. By the way, you can rent them at customaquariums.com. Check them out. It's tank moving time. And this time we got some harnesses to try out. But can you see the excitement in my face? Here you, go. you want to lift it up? What are we going to do? Lift this? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Baby, you got this? Yeah. How much you squat, bro? Squat. <laughs> it goes behind your head. I think my entire Kneel down. Kneel down, kneel down. 
You down and come up? Yeah. Go ahead. Don't rip your pants, Alain. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, bitches. Watch your step, Alain. Alain. Alain, Alain, Alain. Why, Alain? All right, drop it. One. Ready? Two. Three. Three. Keep going, keep going. It got caught. It's caught. Look. Hold on. One, two, three. Okay, more. okay. We got a gotta turn, bro. A little more. A little no. more. Hold on, let me get Back down. Back here in the, the lift. Leo, grab that corner, yep. Right. Oh, good, 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 perfect, perfect. Good. Down, down. That's good. Right, Watch your foot. Wait, wait. Go. Watch your foot, babe. I'm saying if we lift it up, no, we no, can hold because it. Because one, whoever's on this side got to lift from there. That means everybody's grip got to be. Those easy. suction cups are the truth. Don't let anybody tell you that those suction cups don't work. They work. Remember that you can rent these cups from customaquariums.com. Check them out for rent only. You got to give them back. You can't keep them. We just we just lift, want? We now just grab one of these. Yeah. Yep. Corner, and corner. You get a corner and corner. I would take that off. And then you get the main. Right above the other one. Right, right above. A little bit more towards over here if you want. Like that. Yeah. We'll grab that shit from the inside. That's crazy, bro. Hold up. All right. We'll trip over the, the uh, pallet. Wait, 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 wait. One more thing to think about. Yeah, we don't need over there. Yeah, the lay bird. Ready? One, okay. two, one, two, three. Two, three. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, this motherfucker's heavy. So we're going back, right? We're going back. We're, we're going up. first. Yeah. Who's going in first? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, All right. Oh, shit. Watch your step. Watch your step right there. How is it? How is it? Good, good. Heavy on you? Huh? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. What? Come over. Oh, you. Put it down. We got it. We got it. I'm sure. Don't fucking think I'm going to do it. We got it over here. Switch. Yeah, you go. Well, I'm not gonna look at the head. Okay, we're in. Oh, shit. What up, what up, what up, what up? You got a place we're gonna stop at? Nope. Oh, I, like, I can't, I'm having back surgery tomorrow. Let me get him that time. Okay, swing Henry. Watch your step with the bucket. Yep. You all right? I mean, I'm gonna have to let go. Both of us. Ah, Just grab it from the outside, know. Henry. No, I don't want to go around the thing, is it? Let me help you out with this right here. Oh. Okay, you got it. Use the outside cups. We both can't go through the door. Henry, get out, get out, get out. Got it? Henry, get out, get out. You want, you got it? You gotta go down, though. Okay, put it on the step. Put it, yep, drop it right in the step. Alright, <coughs> there's somebody else in there with me. You gotta go around. You gotta go around to the front. Hold on, this is scary, bro. I don't like that angle. Hey, but you wanna go around on that, on that side of the head? Grab the middle. As soon as we clear it in, you grab these two bottom ones. Like the ones you were doing? Yeah. Yeah, but then once it's in there, somebody can help. Yeah, once it gets in, then. Alright, you guys ready? Wait, but if I'm gonna take over, I'd rather take over now. Oh, you can't take it. Because I'm, if I'm going to miss now, you're going to use it. You got what you're going to use? I'm going to use these two. You've got the wood part. You ready? You ready? One, One two, two, three. Slow, slow. Ready? 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 The bottom, turn the angle. Oh, 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 oh. I got it. You're too high. You're too high. Leo, you're too high, Leo. That's the angle. That's the angle. Yo, I'm lowering this. Big up, man. Big up. There you go. I got it right here. You gotta go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. Okay. Drop it flat. Drop it flat. Put the wall. Yeah, put the grips higher because we're just sliding it across. We don't want to lift it all that high. Yeah, yeah but we're coming this way. Right. Yep, yep.
Yo, we, we had these cups in the, the move when we, when we brought these tanks, bro. Right. One, two, three. Oh, that shit's easy, bro. Nice <laughs> <laughs> right, yep. round it? Yeah, little swing. Okay. I gotta give him that stuff. Okay, drop it. Yeah, it's all right. We got it. We got it. Is that corner heavy? No. One, two, three. All right. Yep. All right, I'm gonna go. All right, drop it. Set it down, set it down. Go ahead, Lord, switch. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Over there. I'm good. I got it. You good? Okay. Ready? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I gotta lift it up and go that way. Yeah, come back out a little. Come back out. Up and out. Up and out. Lil, get your tummy over. All right. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Switch that. You good, yo? I have something. No weight right here. All right. One, two, three, go. All right, line it up. Go up. To me, to me, yeah. up and to me, up and to me. Okay, focus right. on. All right. I got my picture with the suction. Babe, stop your phone. A quarter? Quarter of inch play. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Easy breezy. Let them know. Easy, easy easy work. Work. 450 in the house. Couldn't have done it without these guys right here. Couldn't have done it without my boys. Let's go. High five, high five, high five. High five, baby. High five, baby. Let's go. K-Man Aquatic, baby. Let's go. 450 in the building. The very last thing that we did on day one is move the 210 gallon into its new location. Somehow the camera wasn't on when we moved it. I don't know. You guys know me. I blame things on the gremlins. And then my boys got to reap all the benefit because they got a fresh new water change and they're loving it. This day started at 6 a.m. and it's literally 10.30 p.m. It's been a long, eventful, but productive day. <laughs> day two begins and all my friends are gone. I'm alone again, one with the tank, and there's plenty of work to do. Let's go. Now that we got the muscle work done, it's time for some finesse. And that means cleanup, guys. Before I install anything in the tank, I just want to make sure it's nice and clean and ready for me. And yes, this tank is very tall. I've got to get on the top step of the ladder just to reach the bottom. And of course, the tank is too close to the wall. I can't even get behind it. So even with my bad shoulder, I'm trying to move that thing all by myself. Got to push the other side as well because there's just no room to get the stool in here. And I won't be able to reach the bottom if I can't get my stool back behind here. And yes, the tank is so big that I've got to sweep it. I gotta sweep the inside of the tank, grab my dustpan, and get that stuff out of there. But just take a look at the massive size of this tank. This thing is huge. Custom Aquariums does an excellent job on the silicone all the way around the tank, making this one of the most strongest tanks I've ever had. That's pretty much why it comes with a lifetime warranty. Check out all my drilled holes for my overflows and my return lines. And the stand is just beautiful. I love the panels, the design. Custom Aquariums, you did well. The sump came packed inside the stand, all in some weird order that doesn't make any sense to me right now. <laughs> just like the tank, just like the stand, this sump is huge. But I really like the design of this seamless sump. Instead of one big glass tank basically as your sump, you got this seamless sump that comes in separate chambers and they connect together very easily after I figure it out. Right now, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what goes where, but you guys know me, I'll figure it out. Right now, I'm basically just looking for the brand so I know which way is forward. But trust me when I tell you, this is absolutely not the order that this sump goes in. But take a look at the sump up close. Very well made, very strong, very sturdy. Comes with all your parts and equipment that you need to hook it up, including Custom Aquarium's own Biomedia. That's pretty cool. So as awesome as this sump looks and as much fun as it looks like I'm about to have getting this thing set up, I've already realized that this is going to have to be an entire video all by itself. I want to get really deep into how to set it up, how it all works. I want to show you guys the details. So if that video is already out, you'll have a card right up there. If it's not out yet, stay posted, all right? We're instead going to start putting the background in because that background needs to be siliconed and it needs at least 24 hours to make sure that that silicone is dry before I can move on and do anything else. So we're going to get that started right now. But first, there's something you must do painting time yes I'm gonna paint the entire back glass and you might be asking why am I painting it if we're gonna put a 3d background in there good question very good question keep watching and you'll see why first step of painting taping as I sit in this tight squeeze I tell you what's next so the tank has multiple drilled holes in it but two of them are not gonna be used because they're gonna be covered by the 3d background 
So I'm going to plug those two holes using these PVC plugs and using some Fusion PVC cement glue. No leakage coming out of those plugs. Er, help me up. <sighs> By the way, leaving your glue up here while you work Probably not the smartest thing to do. Don't do what I do. So I got the tank prepped for painting, but now that I think about it, because the squeeze back there is so tight, I know I'm gonna have to be moving back and forth behind the tank when I'm putting the 3D background in. I don't want any of that paint to rub off on me while I'm working on the background. So instead, we're gonna get the background in now. That needs time to cure anyway and dry, so background it is. This 3D background comes to you by way of AquaDecorBackgrounds.com, one of my amazing sponsors. They hooked it up with this custom piece. I cannot even tell you the model number. I know it's a B model, but this is a custom piece. Make sure you get your orders in early because it does take time to make these custom backgrounds and get them shipped to you. They are coming from Serbia. As you can see, they really wrapped this stuff up good to make sure it gets to you all in however many pieces it comes in. This particular model is one that needs silicone along the entire backside and the bottom of the background just because it is so thick. This is either my third or my fourth background from aquadecorbackgrounds.com. I've lost count a long time ago and they never fail with the quality. It's always amazing every time it comes here. If you guys want to check them out, make sure you use the code CAVEMAN10 and you'll get a 10% discount. So we dry fitted the background just to make sure that it fits right from bottom to top, that the height is correct, that the holes line up, and so far so good. I do have to do a little bit of custom work on these holes. You can see they're a little bit off. Not a problem, I'll figure it out. So now that it's in there, the height is good, we're gonna go ahead and start silicone in this bad boy. To silicone the background, we're using CellSil Aquarium Silicone, safe for fish and aquariums. I realized that instead of covering these holes with tape, I might as well just put the bulkheads in and then put the tape around the bulkheads on the outside. I'll be a little bit safer. Get your calf work in, fellas. background is in we finally got some pieces of wood in there to hold it back just so that the silicone can hold to the back of the glass it's looking pretty good we're gonna let that cure overnight let it sit just like that starting to take shape starting to get there so here's a pretty cool look at the back of the tank before painting it something that you and I will probably never ever see again the back of the background with all the silicone on it pre-painted well fun to see it while it lasted does this space look tight let me tell you you're right it is but i have no choice i cannot move this tank any further out into the room i'm going to use rust-oleum ultra cover flat black paint the good old-fashioned paint that i painted my 150 and 210 back in the day i'm using the exact same one I'll have a link to this in the description if you wanted to try this paint. Hopefully I don't make a huge mess back here. I can't even spin my shoulders around. Some of you that know me well enough already know that I really dislike painting, but what we do for the lifestyle, man. It's day three in the fish cave and today we're going to release the background and make sure everything was good last night. And we're gonna put a second, possibly a third coat of paint on the background. After that, we're gonna go ahead and start installing our sump. That's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Let's go, let's get busy. Well, my dislike of painting really showed overnight. I got a bunch of drips all over the place, but this second coat is gonna go on much, much better. And I think that all we're gonna need is two coats because I really don't wanna do three. I think two coats is all she's gonna need. Check it out. Not bad for a guy that hates painting. <laughs> and doesn't have any painting skill whatsoever. Looks pretty good to me. Two coats is all she's gonna get. From the front, I'm gonna have to do a little touch-ups after I take the paint off. We'll touch up around the overflows, touch up at the top of the tank, but overall, looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. I just gotta say, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. 
Getting the background and the painting done was a pretty big accomplishment. One out of like four major steps. And now we're ready to move on to the next big one. But of course, I got to do a little bit of cleaning. Get that stuff out of the tank first. Now we are ready. Tank is clean and looks like it's ready for water. Are we ready for water? No way. We got to set up the sump now. Let's do it. We're ready to start getting the seamless stump installed. Now, I am going to take you guys with me, but I'm not going to go through the detailed process of installing and hooking up the sump not in this video if you want to see that check that video out right there i did entirely on the sump process all by itself but for now we'll just move on to getting this tank completed that's all you got to do to set up this tub this is going right under the tank next one is the baffle tub simply lift this one up and it slides right in and now both of these are connected together next we got the evap reservoir Fugium Reservoir. Here's our sump fully installed under the tank and fully connected, dry fitted. All of the chambers connected together. Now we're going to go to the back and do the hose work. And you should end up with something that looks like this. I've got three overflows, which are the white hoses, and two return lines, which are the green hoses. Not too bad for a guy who can't carpenter anything. Grab your overflow and it simply goes right into the bulkhead. Bang. When water reaches this level, it'll fill this chamber up and overflow right down the pipe. This one's already installed right here. But I'm going to install the second one right in my next return hole. Push it in there. Fits nice and snug. Everything is done behind the tank. There is no reason for it to be out of place. I'm going to attempt to move it right now all by myself. Can I move it? I don't know but I definitely need my super grips to get it going. Let's see what happens. Let's try to push. Look, I'm gonna push from right here, right here. Right here? Not on the door, right there. Not on the door. Put your palms here. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. shoulder and oh baby Arr. what's left to do guys only the best part let's fill this puppy up so why am i only filling the sump and i'm not filling the tank well number one tomorrow we're going to start aquascaping the tank so it's got to stay dry because we're putting in plants we're putting in the substrate all that good stuff is tomorrow i'm really excited to see when the first baffle fills up and goes into the next one <laughs> Okay, the hose is submerged and she's starting to drip into the next baffle. Don't know if you guys can see it, but I see the drip. That's pretty cool. Check out the bottom there, that water level starting to rise. So far, so good. No leaks. Don't see any drips right there. I don't see, well, there's no drips here yet because the water level's not there yet. It's day five of the fish cave setup and today I have Luis from Seachem helping me out. Hey guys, this is Luis Navarro with Seachem Labs. I'm the aquatic plant specialist for uh, the company. I told you guys I'm not playing around. I got a professional here helping me out. Luis, how many years do you have aquascaping? Oh my goodness. Um, I'll have to say over 30 years by now. 30 years of experience in the fish cave aquascaping the 210. Let's go. Nice. Maybe it's right there, right? Right there, right? Massive. 
Well, there's a lot of plants in here, man. <laughs> yeah. I want them clean. Wow. Oh, those are nice. I like those. those. Nice. Oh, this is what I was looking for. That's pretty. It's the same as that. This is just a model plant. Look at the size of this. That's huge. But wait, there's more. Big, big shout out to my amazing sponsor, Seachem, not only for letting me borrow their in-house professional aquascaper, but for blessing me with all of these plants, all of this substrate, all of this product, for sponsoring this project, Seachem for the W. Let me talk to you real quick about my man Luis Navarro. Not only is he an exceptional aquascaper, he's an all-around great dude. As busy as this guy is, I'm talking about busy like traveling around the world, literally. Before coming to New York to help me out with this project, he was just in Ecuador. After leaving New York, as I speak right now, he's currently in Dubai right now. When he gets back from Dubai, he's heading out to Colombia. This guy is always busy. But somehow, some way, I asked a couple questions about plants, and because he had a free open week, one week window available, he offered to help me out and I was super grateful. Somehow, some way, the cards aligned that this tank got here in the same week that he was in between traveling to some other country. Some way, somehow, this 3D background got here at the exact time that the tank was getting here. It was all just meant to be. That's why I know that this tank, when Luis is done with it, is going to be off the charts and the best advice that i could give you right now is just to enjoy watching an artist at work so what what type of plant is this microsorum theropus or java fern java fern very commonly used right very commonly used it's an epiphytic plant it's really easy for a project like this to grow because it does not require um, as much as other plants do and it can do well in the time without co2 I want to create contrast by using different leaf shapes, and these are broad, those are much more narrow. Mm -hmm. Is that the same double front? It is the same double front. It's, it's much narrow leaf, yeah. so this is going to be on the top. I like the way that looks. Luis, walk me through what type of plant these are, just so we're all aware. All right, we're working with epiphytic plants, and we have Bulbitis eudelotai and Microsorum theropus, which is the bread and butter java fern. We have two kinds, the narrow leaf, and we have the you know, regular variant here. So, Bulbitis get big, but it takes longer than java fern to take off. Once this gets going, it's gonna shade, create a shade over the java fern, and by doing so, it will prevent the leaves from, you know, getting too old too quickly with algae and whatnot. It is you though that need to keep an eye on these plants because it's just good gardening to get in and remove all leaves. And when you see a split on the top and you see the spores getting new growth, that's good and all, but it can create a really big mess. So I'd rather keep those, um, clean off the rhizome so it always have this look fresh and maintains a you know more better looking tank in the long in the long run. So Luis tell me what we're working with right here. So now we're moving on to Anubias. This is one of the first Anubias available to the trade is Anubias Barteroi bar Barteroi. So I'm removing 
the roots so I can easily glue it uh, to the structure. And as you can see, it's nice and healthy. So we will continue adding more plants. Cool. Luis even let me get my hands dirty, opening up a couple of packages, removing the plant and taking the little plastic pot off of it. Now this is some kind of wool that keeps the plant secure in place during shipping. If you remove this wool, it exposes the roots. And as you can see, we've got a beautiful, healthy Anubius plant right here. Healthy roots, healthy plant, looking nice. Scaping's all done. Our plants that we're gonna use are on the background and it's finally time for some substrate. Now I know what your question is, why are all the plants wrapped in saran wrap? Well, we had to go to lunch. And the thing with these aquatic plants is that they have to stay wet. If they dry up, they will die. So we had to soak them in water really quickly and then wrap them up in saran wrap to make kind of a temporary greenhouse effect to keep them wet, to keep them moist while we left for lunch and came back. Check Luis out. He has a great technique of spreading a nice thin layer of sand, which I really like. I usually do a thick layer of sand, but I do like the way this very thin layer looks. It almost looks very beach-like and I like it. And as soon as Luis gets done, being salt bay and throwing sand all over the tank, we're gonna go ahead and remove the saran wrap and start filling up. But first, check this out. It's tank filling time and even though we did start with a very low flow of water to prevent the sand from blowing everywhere, this fill took forever and even at this super high speed, I cannot show the whole thing. It's too long but I do want to tell you that the reason why we scaped the tank the way that we did with only a partial planted scape is because of the fish that are going to be kept in this tank. Number one, my boy Scuba, the Stingray is going to be in here, as well as Flaco the Arowana, so we wanted to make sure that they both had enough free open swimming space. Sweat on my brow, but the pumps are in the sump, and we're about to power it up and check it out for the first time. Here we go. So I hear, the I hear it overflowing. You hear that drain. It's overflowing. Let's check the sump. I hear water coming into the socks. Here it comes from the tank. That will overflow into here. Forget all that. Look what I woke up to the following morning. A room filled with natural light, making the tank look even more stunning. I had to take a step back and just look at the whole fish cave and realize this is why we do what we do. It makes it all worth it. I honestly don't know what day it is anymore, but today is lighting day. We're installing six blade freshwater lights on the 450, but first. Your custom aquarium's tank also comes with glass tops. These tops are very well made. They're crystal clear to look through and they got a little bit of weight on them. So if you got like an arowana, that thing's not getting out of here. Also comes with your handles for each top and you also get your glass tops for your sump. Each one is individually cut for the size that you need for each chamber. And the reason why these are very important, not only to prevent fish from jumping out of your tank, but these glass tops are important to prevent evaporation from your tank and from your sump so that you don't have to continuously top it off. I got a little fancy, hooked up my controllers nice and my heaters nice, but here's a nice look at the entire sump. It's really nice. I'm excited to learn more about sumps and what I can get into with these things. I'm going with the same blade freshwater light as usual that I use on my 210 N150. But we got a little problem. I was gonna use the HMS mount kit to mount the lights, but I forgot about the height of my 3D background. I am not gonna be able to use the mount kit on this tank. Another option would have been to hang the lights from the ceiling, 
but the cables and wires might block the logo sign in the middle and that might not look so well. I had to make the executive decision and move forward. We're gonna go ahead and just put the lights on top of the glass and let them lay there for now until we can think of something better for the future. I got three lights on one side of the tank and the next three, what a doof, and the next three on the other side of the tank. This will ensure that the entire tank gets light. There are no dead spots and it's gonna look good this way for now. Here's a good look at the top of the tank with all six lights. Doesn't look bad, it's okay for now. MP40. That's right, we're going with the Vortec MP40 on the new 450, just like my other tanks that are rocking the MP40. Do not forget to put your gasket, make sure you got the right size on it, or you could break your wave maker. I'm going with two of these MP40s on this tank. One is gonna be on one side, one on the other at the bottom. As you can see, this is really easy to install. Just put your wet side in the tank and it attaches to the dry side. Hook up your control unit, whatever you like, and you're done. Now I go to the other side. This is gonna be a little tougher because I gotta go deep into the tank and I'm gonna get arm length of wetness. But just like the other side, you just attach the wet side to the dry and that's it, you're done. Let your water drip off your hand onto a towel on the floor, you're good to go. Here's a good look at the MP40s back and forward. Very low profile, it's the reason why I like them. But these two wave makers are gonna get the job done. Are you still here? Wow, you are a real one. If you've been here this long, I wanna know about it. Comment below, fish cave for the W. That way I know who the real ones are. I know you were probably hoping to see fish in the new tank already. I was hoping for the same, but I'm actually going away on vacation for an entire week. So the timing right now is terrible. I wouldn't want to add my fish to this brand new tank with a brand new sump and then be gone for a week without anybody here to look after it. Hopefully you all enjoyed it, but this is the longest YouTube video I've ever made. If you're looking for that sump installation video, check that video out right there. And if you want to see when I actually add fish to this tank, check that video out right there. I'll see you on the other side. Peace.